Hey guys, it is Patrick here and I wanted you to know before you dive right into this accounting information systems lesson that the accompanied worksheet is available for download if you head to my website at www.patricklymsa.com or I'll leave the link directly to that worksheet down in the description below. Click on that, download the worksheet and print it out and that way you can follow along the accounting information systems lecture that I'm about to teach. So it has all the notes that I'm going to be going over. All you need to do is write your notes and fill in those blanks. So make sure you do that. And here is your AIS lesson. All right. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about business processes or also known as transaction cycles. In accounting information systems, we kind of group systems or we group this whole idea of accounting information systems by business process or transaction cycles. So in this lesson, we're going to give you kind of a basic overview of what business processes are. It's also called transaction cycles. So, you know, if you hear, hear me saying transaction cycles or business process or business process transaction cycles, there really is the same thing at the end of the day. And we're gonna talk about that as we talk about this section in detail. So business processes are an uh, important part of an accounting information systems and we segregate different activities and tasks to the different process within a business. So let's get talking a little bit about uh, what this is all about. So in accounting information systems, we rely on business processes for our discussion. So that's what we're gonna revolve a lot of our conversations around is what type of process are we dealing with or what type of transaction cycles are we dealing with? Now, what is a business process? Well, this is a set of related, coordinated and structured activities and tasks that are performed by a person, a computer or a machine, and that helps accomplish a specific organizational goal. Now, there's a lot to this definition, so let's break it down a little bit. So a set of related, coordinated, and structured activities and tasks. So these are tasks that are put together and they are coordinated, so they're somewhat related in the reason why we're putting them together in this business process. And within this process, and remember, process is a whole bunch of tasks. So within this process, we have all these tasks and those tasks can be completed by either a person, a computer, or a machine. So a person might be the one that's filling out the documents to schedule something for something to happen. We might have a computer to process that uh, request into the system. And then we might have a machine that actually manufactures uh, a product that we need uh, to sell to a customer. So we've got this process that, and a process would be interrelated tasks or activities within it, and then those tasks and activities are uh, accomplished by either a person, a machine, or a computer, and all of these help accomplish a specific organizational goal. So remember that you know we're gonna have many different business process and not one business process can do everything to achieve the organizational's goal. We need other business process or transaction cycles to work together so that they're all achieving or helping to achieve a portion of the overall organizational goal. So again, specifically here, a specific organizational goal. So let's give you an example of a business process. The example that I'm gonna use here is to pay an employee. So what are the different activities or tasks that need to occur in order to pay an employee? Now, if you're an employee right now, you probably think, oh, I'm just gonna turn in my uh, hours and then I get a check and that's the process. Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So this is kind of uh, me walking you through what that process might look like in this business process. So the first thing here is all hours are entered into a timekeeping software by the employee. So you as the employee will enter your time in or maybe you clock in and clock out and that time is then summarized and sent to HR or payroll to cut you a check at the end of the pay period. Then the hours are summarized by the timekeeping system and sent to the employee supervisor for approval. So that information information goes to your supervisor, your supervisor obviously needs to approve it because if you were me, I would just say that I worked 100,000 hours and hopefully I get paid $500,000, right? Mm, that's called fraud, okay? More on that, not in this course, in, in audit, okay? 
Payroll department reviews hours and approves the payroll preparation. So obviously this is a next second level approval process in which the payroll department has a pretty good idea what payroll should come out um, at the end of the day, calculated wise. They pretty have much have a good idea because they've been doing it every pay period. So they know it needs to be within this range, right? And if it's not, they got to look for anomalies on where is it off? Or they may have even systems in place that helps them calculate, you know, employees pay, this specific employee should be within this range. And for some reason it's out of range. Let's go investigate why it's out of range because we don't want to overpay the employee or even underpay the employee unless there's a specific reason why. Um, then a third party usually runs payroll for the company and remits payroll data to the payroll department. So typically what happens is that information is transmitted to a payroll processor um, and that payroll processor then does the payroll for the company, calculating all the deductions, um, calculating the net pays, calculating what needs to be paid to whom and all of that um, complicated information, uh, calculate complicated uh, calculations and then issues kind of checks or uh, direct deposit advices for each employee that needs to get paid. Uh, payroll department approves payroll detail and payroll department or third party company issues payment. So depending, you know, as someone who has done payroll before for a company, we issued the payment for a lot of our clients, but um, some clients didn't want us to have their bank information and didn't want us to cut checks for them. So we literally just sent them, you know, uh, an email saying, hey, these are your employees. This is how much you're going to pay them. You, you deal with that. For other clients, we actually initiated the direct deposit and we initiated the checks on their behalf so that they wouldn't have to deal with that. So uh, that has to happen, obviously, because the employee has to get paid. We can't just calculate it and not pay them. We got to pay them at the end of the day. Last thing that we might do is that we might look at the withdrawals at the end of the day and compare them to the ending reports to make sure that what we expected to come out of our accounts actually did come out of our accounts or the uh, maybe we had a, um, an employee that didn't cash their check yet. So we need to know that information as well. So we want to be able to reconcile what has happened with what did happen according to our report. So that's an example of a business process, specifically paying an employee. Now, business process is developed based on related transactions. So as you saw, as I walk through an employee, we've got related transactions. All of those related tasks, all of those tasks are related to each other. How are they related to each other? They're all related or required in order for us to pay our employee at the end of the day. Now, transaction, what is a transaction? Well, if you've studied principles of accounting or financial accounting, you kind of know what a transaction is, but more formally, this is what a transaction is. So this is an agreement between two entities to exchange goods or services. And this also includes internally, right? So. You know, if we are, um, let's say, depreciating a piece of equipment and we're the accounting department or we're the company as a whole, we are basically contracting with uh, the accounting department with the uh, manufacturing department in that they are depreciating that equipment. So we're allowing the manufacturing department to use that piece of equipment to manufacture a product. It seems kind of, you know, weird because you know you're, you're basically promising and companies promising themselves the use of this equipment but that we're basically two entities we've got the company and the accountants and then we've got the uh, manufacturing department which is another department those two entities are uh, have an agreement that you can use this equipment we're going to depreciate it this way and then we're going to charge it to the manufacturing process now a transaction process is also known as transaction processing so when we talk about transaction processing we're actually processing the transaction putting that transaction into our books so example of that would be us taking data putting it into an accounting system and then finally providing some type of information to the end user that is transaction processing the whole thing is called a transaction process. So that is a look at what a transaction is. And with that, that is a business process. So again, you know, reviewing what we learned in this lesson, business process is interrelated activities and tasks that help us achieve a specific goal. At the end of the day, that goal hopefully will help the greater organization achieves its main goal at the end of the day. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. If you're looking for the next lesson, make sure you hit up that lesson right over here. And if you are looking for the entire accounting information systems course, make sure you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com where I have the full AIS course available to you. So until next time, we'll see you in the next video.